Hello and welcome to the virtual waterfront walking tour. My name is Rachel Easton with Harbor Wild Watch and together with the Harbor History Museum and the Downtown Waterfront Alliance, we've partnered to bring you this waterfront walking tour for the past six years. Because of the current situation, we're unable to do these tours in person and we'll be bringing them to you virtually on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in to learn more about the different stops from two of our popular tours, Skiffs to Spirit and the Wonders of the Waterfront. Today, I will be your tour guide for a segment of the Wonders of the Waterfront tour. I am particularly fond of this tour because it explores the incredible wildlife and natural resources of Gig Harbor's past and present. Even though I am super passionate about Gig Harbor, please remember that I'm not a historian and it's simply not possible to cover everything about Gig Harbor on each stop. But if you'd like to share your stories or drop some knowledge related to this stop, feel free to write those into the comment section. You're also welcome to ask us questions and we'll do our best to answer them. Today, we're going to talk about the Maritime Pier. But before we get started, I'd like to take a moment and recognize that we are on the traditional lands of the Puyallup people and other speakers of the Southern Lushootsee language since time immemorial. The name for the Puyallup people in Lushootsee is Spoyalapach and means generous and welcoming to all people. We acknowledge these people as the keepers of the land and pay our respects to them. Welcome to the Maritime Pier. This is the spot of Gig Harbor's second ferry landing location, originally called the People's Dock. Today it's called the Maritime Pier and is a nod to the fishing community that helped shape Gig Harbor's early history. There are two gates built into this dock that help fishing vessels load and unload their gear. Those without their own dock and net shed have access through this community pier. As you now know, Gig Harbor is very much still a fishing town. While boat building, logging, and milling industries have faded, commercial fishing has remained a prominent industry here as third and fourth generation Croatians have carried on the tradition. In fact, Gig Harbor is still home to one of the largest commercial fishing fleets on the West Coast, with 120 commercial fishing permit holders that ply the waters from California to Alaska. It's a multi-million dollar industry that provides hundreds of direct and indirect jobs and contributes significantly to the local economy when boats are provisioned and fishermen are outfitted. Local crews operate in multiple fisheries, including crab, herring, salmon, sardines, and squid. If you like to eat seafood, make sure to download the Seafood Watch app. It's a great way to make informed choices about your seafood consumption. This area is also known to divers who are seeking old bottles. Before modern trash service was available, most trash was either burned or dumped into the local waterways. Obviously, we know now that was a pretty bad practice, and we do our very best to keep trash away from the water. Glass is one of the very few things that survives long term because it cannot rot or rust. It often becomes habitat for encrusting organisms like barnacles. Very old bottles are quite collectible and valuable, but don't go diving hoping that you'll strike it rich. This is a dangerous place to dive because of the very presence of so many boats. This location is also perfect for watching wildlife. Did you know that the Salish Sea is home to the world's largest form of plankton? That's right, the lion's mane jellyfish can be eight feet across with tentacles stretching more than 100 feet long. And because it can't fight a current, it falls in that category of plankton which is a Greek word meaning wanderer or drifter. While our jellyfish do sting, it's not life-threatening to humans. Most of the jellies in the Salish Sea have a sting that feels a bit like touching nettles. It's also not uncommon to see seals, sea lions, and river otters in the water below us. Harbor seals and the California sea lions are the most common species that you can find here. To tell the difference between seals and sea lions, you'll have to look closely. Sea lions will be dark brown, They'll have a loud barking call and they walk on land using their large flippers and have visible ear flaps. Seals, on the other hand, are smaller with silvery gray and dark spotted pelts. They have small flippers and wriggle on their bellies on land and they don't have any visible ear flaps. Both of them are found in the Salish Sea year round. Pupping season happens during the summer months and mothers will often leave their young pups on the shore. This is because the young ones have very little blubber reserves and they can easily get too cold. They're also poor swimmers and hinder their mother's ability to hunt. 
Mothers will not return to their babies if people or dogs are present, so keeping a distance is critical. Oftentimes, well-meaning people will intervene, thinking the little pup is in distress, but the worst thing that you can do is to move it. If you ever think a pup really has been abandoned, retreat at least 100 yards and monitor for 24 hours. Then, if the mother still hasn't returned, call the Marine Mammal Stranding Network. Another iconic animal also calls these waters home, the orca whale. Orcas are actually the largest species of dolphin. And here in the Salish Sea, we have two varieties. First, we have the mammal-eating orcas, also known as bigs or transient orcas. They roam the waters of the Pacific Northwest from California to Alaska. They eat seals, sea lions, dolphins, porpoise, and other whales. The name killer whale is a mistranslation and really should be whale killer based on what these animals eat. These orcas occasionally come into the southern Puget Sound. The salmon-eating orcas, or resident orcas, are the second type. These are orcas that are born in the Salish Sea and remain here most of their lives. Of these orcas, there are two groups, the northern and southern. Although they don't come into the shallow waters of Gig Harbor Bay, the southern residents can be found here throughout the year. There are three pods, J, K, and L, all of which are endangered. There are only 76 individuals remaining, and they are on the brink of functional extinction. What this means is if a few more reproducing females die, they will not be able to sustain their population past the current generation. A large reason why these animals are so few in number is due to their collection for marine parks in the 60s and 70s. 13 individuals died during the process, and another 45 whales were sent to marine parks around the country. Of those captured, only Tokate at the Miami Seaquarium is still alive today. And while it became illegal to remove orca from the Puget Sound decades ago, there's still a number of threats that are facing them. Primary is their lack of food source. These animals eat Chinook salmon almost exclusively. They are also subjected to noise pollution and ship strikes and polluted waters. Just two years ago, a member of the J-Pod, Talequa, made international news when she carried her dead calf for 17 days. While it was incredibly sad to watch this tragedy unfold, she brought attention to the struggle that these orcas face, and there is now a task force working to save this iconic species from extinction. Scientists actually reported this year that Talequa is pregnant again, and we have high hopes that she'll be able to raise that calf and bring about the next generation of southern resident orcas. There are a few things that we all can do to help protect and restore the orca population. First, reduce stormwater pollution. Fix the leaks in your car, eliminate harmful chemicals from your yard and home, and eliminate single-use plastic in your daily life. If you do eat salmon, be sure to eat wild-caught salmon. Farmed salmon are harmful to the environment for a number of reasons, including increased spread of disease, parasites like sea lice, escapement, and antibiotic and pesticide use. Even the use of artificial food coloring to make their flesh the same vibrant color of their wild counterparts. We like to say, friends don't let friends eat farmed fish. We encourage your friends and family to enjoy whale watching via land-based sites. Follow Orca Network on Facebook and get daily updates of where the southern resident orcas and other marine mammals are spotted. That's it for our tour today. Thank you so much for joining us on this exploration of the Maritime Pier. Be sure to tell your family, friends, and anyone thinking of visiting Gig Harbor to watch these videos and learn a little bit more about our beautiful waterfront and how we are all, past and present, tied to the water. Mm -hmm.